This video was sponsored by Blinkist. More on them in a bit. What's up, Star fans? Jack here with another Starbase update for you. This week, we saw some extremely promising signs that Booster 7 is about to be lifted back on the orbital launch mount, and that launch... Wait, where's the tank farm? Where's the launch, launch site? Where's the chaos? What am I, a Blue Origins launch site? I guess I am. Anyway, we also saw some interesting things happen with Ship 25 and 26. We saw a new way of building ships in the high bay, and Booster 10 was born in the mega bay. It's a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. Starting off the week, we had Ship 26 moving out from the high bay and transported next to the rocket garden off Remedios Avenue. Here it stayed for a few days, getting ready to be lifted onto the new taller ship stand we talked about last week. Of course, in order to lift a ship, you first have to hook it up to a crane. In this case, our new friend, the LR1750 crane, was hooked up to the ship in preparation for that lift. Next up, moving over to the orbital launch site, a lot of interesting things happened at the start of the week. You may remember last week's Starbase update had an update to the update because SpaceX installed the final piece of shielding on the side of the launch mount while we were in editing. It really is hard to keep up with their pace these days, isn't it? But predictably, when we put out that video saying the final piece of shielding had been installed on the side of the launch mount, a lot of people said, well actually, that might not be the final shielding that the orbital launch mount will get. And maybe that's a fair assessment, so let's pause and ask whether this is actually all done for now. There's no doubt that the side panels of the orbital launch mount are complete, but who says they won't shield the bottom where all the pipes are located as well? Maybe they even shield the top further. So once again, let's be clear, this was the final piece of shielding to be installed on the sides of the orbital launch mount. Whatever happens next, we'll be watching. So what else happened with the orbital launch mount this week? Well, we saw concrete being pumped into the legs of the orbital launch Wait, is this a script from 2020? Let's see here. Oh, okay, it says on the orbital launch mount leg extensions. I have the right script. You might be thinking to yourself, as I did, what? SpaceX still hasn't pumped concrete into the leg extensions? And indeed, they seem a little bit late to the party here. In case you don't remember, the orbital launch mount legs were initially installed in 2020 and were filled with concrete before the vertical extensions were added in 2021. The deck of the orbital launch mount, where the booster sits and all the hold downs are located, is sitting right on top of these vertical extensions. The extensions are being filled now, two years after they were installed. This will hopefully give the orbital launch mount and its legs additional strength, and it'll need it to endure the force and weight of a fully fueled full Starship stack, plus the insane power of 33 Raptor engines firing at 90% thrust. Next up, over at Booster 7, this week we saw crews working on its flight termination system. In case you don't know, the flight termination system contains explosive charges that destroy the booster at the common bulkhead in case of an anomaly. After all, it's much better to have many small-ish pieces of steel versus one giant uncontrolled ballistic missile. While we think the explosive charges for the FTS are not present right now and will be installed closer to launch, this work might be for preparation and validation that the system can sense a failure and activate the charges. Now let's go back to the production site for an update on the status of the new building under construction at the site of the old scrapyard. This week we saw more work on the foundation, with more pilings being driven into the ground. With all this foundation work, whatever they're building there must be quite heavy. Or maybe it's just that the soil is really not stable, and a lot of work needs to be done to support whatever SpaceX is building. Next up, we've seen more water deluge manifold piping staged at the propellant production site. Here, SpaceX teams are putting them together in the shape needed for when they are installed at the launch pad. You can see all the little pipes sticking out, which will allow for the water to be sprayed under the booster during engine ignition, and hopefully will protect the orbital launch mount from the force of 33 Raptor engines. Next door to where the water deluge piping is being assembled, Booster 8's aft section was hooked up to a crane in preparation for lift off the booster transport mount it's been sitting on for a few weeks. This is one of the last parts of Booster 8 left to be scrapped. The day after it was hooked up to a crane, this piece was lifted, and now the booster transport stand is finally free to be used on a new booster, hopefully Booster 11. Ever since Booster 7 was lifted off the launch mount, we've seen a lot of work going on inside and on top of it. This week we even saw a pressure washer being lifted up. Why on earth would they lift a pressure washer up to the launch mount deck? 
I wonder what they would need to wash off of it. This is probably one of those things we don't actually want the answer to. <laughs> Bird poop. Sorry, nobody wants to hear about that. In fact, let's hear from Sawyer about our sponsor for this video. Did you know that you could use Starlink, or any internet for that matter, to understand some of the biggest mysteries in just minutes? Well, you can, with the help of today's sponsor, Blinkist. Blinkist allows you to take away the main ideas from over 5,500 nonfiction books and podcasts in just 15 minutes. With 27 different categories to choose from, Blinkist can help you discover new perspectives and broaden your horizons in all different kinds of topics. I travel a lot to cover launches, and now I can learn in a fun and unique way without ever taking my eyes off the road or the rocket. I was just listening to a blink on Carl Sagan's The Demon Haunted World, Science as a Candle in the Dark. Even with all the controversy today about what's real and what's fake, Carl Sagan even then helped break down pseudoscience versus the real thing and how that impacts our everyday lives. I love how he discusses the nerd mold when it comes to being a scientist, and I think that helps me every day in becoming a better science communicator. Blinkist has a brand new feature called Blinkist Connect. It allows you to share your Blinkist account with another friend or family member, and it doesn't cost you anything. That means you get two memberships for the price of one. To get started, visit Blinkist.com slash NSF friends, where you can get a seven day free trial and 25% off Blinkist Premium. And remember, that comes with Blinkist Connect included. Thank you, Sawyer, and thanks Blinkist for sponsoring this video. All right, let's get right back into it. Earlier, I mentioned the water deluge system being assembled at the propellant production site. Well, funnily enough, over at the launch site, the work on that deluge system has been... not so much. While a few pipes have been delivered and moved around, and some digging has been done to make space to lay those pipes in up to the launch tower, not much more has happened beyond that. Isn't it interesting and fun how one week SpaceX can be like, go, go, go on a system, making us think it'll be installed before the orbital launch, and the next week it seems like things have slowed to the pace of cold molasses? Fun! Well, maybe things have just been paused. They seem to have a lot of work on their plate right now with the orbital launch mount, and with the target of launching Starship in April, work on the deluge system is more intermittent rather than continuous, as they move resources from one place to the other. As my old AP US history teacher, Mr. Maisner, would say, dog barks, sled moves on. What exactly does that mean? I don't know, so let's move on. Next up, let's talk more about Booster 7 and another reason why it might be soon to be lifted back onto the launch mount. If you remember last week, the hydraulic power unit or HPU aero covers had been removed and this week they've been reinstalled. Yay! Now let's rapidly switch gears and talk about a booster that doesn't have hydraulic power units, Booster 10. Booster 10 was finally fully stacked in the mega bay this week. As a quick refresher, all boosters up to Booster 7 had hydraulic power units. They're used to provide, well, hydraulic power to gimbal the Raptor engines. However, boosters 9 and beyond, including of course Booster 10, do not have hydraulic power units and instead use an electrically actuated gimbal system for their Raptors. This reduces weight, removes complexity from the system, and is one less thing to break. Booster 10 will continue to be worked on in the Mega Bay for the next few weeks and months. And when it's ready, we'll move into pre-flight testing. Of course, the first of which is cryoproofing. Now the interesting thing is, will that cryoproof test occur at the launch site or at Massey's? Let us know what you think in the comments. While Booster 10 was being born in the Mega Bay, a new ship was being stacked in the High Bay, but a little bit differently than we've seen before. From Ship 24 to Ship 27, ships were being stacked first in two main sections. The top of the ship would be made up of the nose cone, the payload bay, and then the forward dome section of the ship. The bottom of the ship would be made up of the common dome section, then the middle of the liquid oxygen tank, or the mid-lock section for short, and then the aft dome section. Each of these halves would be stacked separately on their own and then joined together in the high bay to form a whole ship. However, for Ship 28, this isn't the case. Instead, the top section of the ship is now stacked on the common dome section. Basically, this means that stacking has occurred from the top down. No more two halves being assembled. Interesting. If you got lost in all of this, we do have a video that we made that was a complete explanation of how Ship 24 and Booster 7 are assembled. Maybe at this point, though, with all the changes to ships and boosters, we should make a new video. What do you think? Next up, it is getting increasingly hard to get a glimpse inside the production tents and star factory building as sight lines become increasingly obstructed with new construction. Though, every now and then we do get a look into them, which gives us insight into what SpaceX is building next. This week, I was able to get a peek inside Tent 3 and the Star Factory. Through that small opening in Tent 3, we can see enough to discern at least three different ship sections. Near the door, 
we can see a forward flap. This one is already installed on a nose cone, and we can even see that the actuator for the flap and part of the aero cover have been installed. This is likely Ship 29's nose cone. Right behind it, there's another nose cone undergoing thermal protection system tile installation. This one is likely to be for Ship 30. And almost hidden from view, right at the back of the tent, is what appears to be a ship payload bay section with tiles already installed. Maybe this one is for either Ship 29 or Ship 30, since they have tiles too right now. We got two views inside the Star Factory. On the left, next to the door, from this view, we can see a ship forward dome section, likely for Ship 30. And on the right, that's a booster aft dome section, probably for Booster 14. In the other view of the interior of the Star Factory that we got, we can see more barrel sections for ships and boosters inside likely for ships well into the 30s and boosters well into the 10s. The machine that builds the machines is really doing its thing. Heading over to the Massey's test site now, not a lot has changed this week from last week, though Ship 25 did get its first cryo test here. As a reminder, Ship 25 already finished cryo testing at the launch site, so this testing was more likely to test the ground systems at Massey's rather than test the ship itself. Moving right along, last week I mentioned that one of the things we want to look out for ahead of Starship's first flight is for scaffolding to be removed from the chopsticks and the orbital launch mount so it doesn't go flying all willy-nilly when Starship launches. Well, as luck would have it, this week that's exactly what we saw. Scaffolding has been removed from the chopsticks. Yet another sign that we're getting just a little bit closer to launch. Next up at the orbital launch site, remember the new stairs that were being installed on the launch mount and all the talk of safety and whatnot? Well, they're gone. They've been removed. That's it. So much for code violations. This kind of makes me think that SpaceX was not happy with them for some reason. Maybe there was an issue with their design, though I expect a company that can build reusable rockets can successfully build a set of stairs. Or maybe they simply don't need them yet. Or maybe they just don't want them to get utterly roasted during Starship's first launch and will just forgo installing them for now. Do you have stairs in your house? Next up is another item on the list of things that give us hopefully not false hope that launch is indeed actually finally. Please let it happen, please finally. Oh my God, it's been two years. Please, please let it happen. Please, please, please. Please God, please let it be real. Please let it be a finally happening. Imminent. And that is that SpaceX tested a new fire suppression system at the orbital launch site. Here you can see it's basically just a high pressure fire hose spraying water on the orbital tank farm. Simple, but does the work. Hopefully it has better aim than the hose they used for SN15. And to wrap up this week, we go back to where we started with Ship 26 being lifted onto that new higher ship stand over at Remedios Avenue. We'll see in the next few days and weeks if they do install engines on Ship 26 as we're thinking they might. And before I go, I have to mention, there's new road closures! For the last few weeks, we've only seen road closures that were meant for transportation. But now, we have road closures for this week, which are like the ones that we typically see for testing. Is this it? Could Booster 7 be getting lifted back onto the launch mount? It doesn't seem like there's much left to be tested, so is launch really going to be soon? Finally, for real this time, we hope so? <sighs> well, whatever happens, we'll be watching. And finally, thanks again to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Get 25% off Blinkist Premium and enjoy two memberships for the price of one. Get started on your seven-day free trial by clicking the link in the description. All right, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching, and of course, be excellent to each other. Oh, oh, I think I see something. I think I, no, 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 it's just, it's just open desert.